This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. We're in New York City. Delighted to be joined by Mr. Tiafimo Lopez. How are you, Tiafimo? I'm good, man. Like a champ. I feel like a champ, and I can't wait for a Saturday night. A few more days. A few more days, and then... Uh, and the new, in your opinion. So, I wasn't going for a handshake, but it kind of fitted then. I'm just going with whatever I see. If I see a hand that's coming out, I'm going to go and grab it and shake it. And yeah, so, um, but I'm excited, man. I think this is a great opportunity for not only myself, but for, for everybody out there that's actually competing on this, uh, on this stage. You know, every time you fight at Madison Square Garden, it's... Um, it's so surreal. The magnitude of it, though, is just amazing, you know, and it's unexplainable. Every time I go out there, this is my sixth time fighting at the Garden, and it, and it still feels like it's, it's going to be my first. The man that is in your way this week is Richard Comey, uh, your first shot at the world title. How are you feeling about fighting Richard Comey? I feel very confident, uh, like I always am, you know, with every fighter that's in front of me and that, that's in my way of becoming great. You know, and that's the whole thing is just trying to be, become the best in my weight division, be the best in the sport as, uh, as much as possible. So Richard Comey, you know, he's a two-time world champion for a reason. And, you know, I believe he's fought in the U.K. as well. So, you know, um, he, he, he has a lot of fans out everywhere, you know. So I, I think that uh, this would be a great, um, excuse me, a great opportunity for myself. Since you turned professional uh, off the back of... Uh, the Olympics, a lot of people have been talking very highly of you, but it's fair to say that we've only really seen glimpses of how good you are. This is the real, as we would say in England, acid test for you to see probably a little bit more about how good you are. Uh, yeah, I, and I think <clears throat> that's the best thing about it is that <clears throat> on a big stage like this, you know, um, I get to actually show everyone and show myself that um what I am doing and what I can do is much more than what they've seen right now, you know, and I think that's what I'm going to display come Saturday night, you know, and, and show everyone that, you know, we're taking not only the toughest competition out there, um, but looking good while doing it. What have you seen of Kami that kind of is possibly strengths, concerns for you going into Saturday? Uh, everything, everything. He has all the tools and uh, he has all the tools, all the tools. Um, he's strong. Uh, he has a lot of experience, you know what I mean? But um, come that night, you know, I think my ring IQ and everything is just going to overwhelm him. You know, the, the speed and all those things that I have uh, that me and my camp have worked on, the technique, the defense, all those things, I think it will just show come that night. You know, and I'm very excited about it, you know. Um, just seeing it right now, just feeling it, just knowing that the moment is almost there, it's, uh, that's what keeps me driven. It's a huge card you're on uh, for Madison Square Garden this week. Obviously, Terence Crawford against Mean Machine. You've got Michael Conlon fighting the key in this. Uh, it's a huge build to be on. Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, that's why you know. Um, what better way to finish it off than, you know, finishing it on Heisman Trophy night? You know, uh, competing on, on on the ESPN platform. You know, you have. Pretty much you're finishing 2019 the right way in the best way possible, and that's just like this, you know. Um, ESPN and Top Rank, they know what they're doing, you know. Um, and for the fight fans, you guys know what you guys want. You know, everybody wants a big fight. Everybody wants to see fights happen that people believe is 50-50 or somebody's going to get knocked out in this fight. And that's what Teofimo tries to bring to each and every one of you guys, you know, is, is try to give you guys the fights that you all want, you know. Um, now, with the promoters and everything like that, it always ends up becoming difficult sometimes to make these type of fights happen. But luckily, we were able to uh, make this type of fight happen, you know. Um, but, you know, it wasn't given. You know, we earned it, and we made sure that we were the mandatory. So he couldn't pass up on it. Clearly, you're focused solely on Richard Comey this week. How frustrating is it for you that people keep wanting to talk about Vasil Lomachenko to you? It's not frustrating at all. You know, uh, maybe for Loma, if he was fighting this week and they mentioned about me, he'll probably be frustrated. But uh, unlike for myself, no, nah, it's not frustrating at all. You know, it just goes to show, you know, um, that a lot of people are more excited about that. You know, I, not just this fight, but they're, they're, they're really looking forward to that fight as well. So, um, and it's every fight with Teofimo. I think that's the best part about it. As long as my name is mentioned in these type of fights and everything like that, um, I'm, I'm happy, man. And I know that I can make these. I can make any fight look good or 
make it look great, you know, and make it worldwide known, you know. So I think everybody's looking forward to 2020. But right now, in order to have that happen is uh, finish this fight right here with Richard Kobe. Obviously, you can't stop the media from asking you questions, but your focus is solely on Kami. When uh, Lomachenko was having his fight with Luke Campbell, he was kind of reluctant to even kind of talk about the fight, which was not announced then, but we knew it was coming between you and Kami. I told you. I told you. He, he, hey, I mean, um, I did something to get under his skin. So, I mean, but I don't care. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I look at it like, you know, I got to fa- I gotta finish this right here that's in front of me. This test, you know, that everybody believes in that I could win and everything is just how we win it makes it that much better. You know, I always, I was telling people, it's either my stock goes up or it goes down. You know, and I'm trying to go up, always, stay up. So, um, uh, everybody tune in, man. It's definitely one to watch. How did you sum up the last two years for you since you've turned professional? i am be honest, man. I, I don't even... I feel like everything just... I mean, being professional for three years now, I, everything has happened uh, in the blink of an eye, I would like to say. Uh, everything... It's just been a roller coaster ride. This year has been a roller coaster ride. But I was able to surpass and, and go through these obstacles in, in, a, in a good way. You know, the best way I can, and um, but it's been it's been a great been a great journey so far. In the media, there's always kind of stuff that people talk about, uh, and it's reported that is happening kind of within your family, etc. Is that frustrating that that side of it comes into it? Um, the thing is, like everybody needs to understand is like even with the boxing life, it, uh, sometimes it could con- uh, it could convert into your personal life. Like always, you know, I think that's in every sport. You know, every industry that you're in, any every entertainment business you're in, I think that comes into, you know, and those are things that you do not want. You know, you don't want to um, go through, but it's just things that you got to have a balance with. You know, the whole thing with my family and everything, I mean, right now is this fight right here. Right now it's about Saturday night, and right now it's about myself, not about anybody else, not about... Um, my family or the issues or anybody that's going on, any all my problems, no. Uh, we'll solve my problems come Saturday night. Have you been to England before? Uh, I actually, yeah, no, I've been, yeah, I've been in London. I've been in London. Um, it was uh, me and the wifey actually during the time that Loma and um, Luke Campbell had their weigh-in. Uh, since my wife's a flight attendant, I was able to, uh, they had gave, Delta had gave her a route, and it, luckily it was London. Surprisingly, it was London, and I just took the flight with her. Uh, sp- spent the day with her and then just came back. You know, I didn't even go there and stay. But uh, for the time being there, man, I enjoyed it. I really wish I could have stayed longer. Did you find yourself talking like a Londoner? <laughs> um, yeah, like, hey, mate, and stuff like that. Hey, I'll be honest, yo. <laughs> hey, I love the accent, though. I wish I could, I could speak like that. I'm going to be real. Yeah, man, but I just enjoy it, man. It, it was really nice. The food is amazing, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, but we, I mean, we come here and... I say the food is amazing here, so it's something different, I suppose. So you go to London, it's something different from what you're used to, so you would say the food is good. Yeah, I mean, it goes both ways, you know, vice versa and stuff, so I think it was like, um, but I don't know, I just feel like it's a lot healthier, you know? It's a lot healthier, I'll be real, man. I mean, here in the U.S., but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but international food I love, for sure. Are you aware of Cockney rhyming slang? No. Do you know what that is? It's got to be one of y'all slangs over there, huh? No, no, Cockney rhyming slang is kind of uh, things that sound like something. So in, in London, they'd probably call you a fridge freezer. Oh, really? Really? Do you know what that is? No, but I, I don't know. I feel like that's like I'll knock somebody ice, like, I, like out cold or some shit. Fridge freezer means you're a bit of a geezer. That means you're... I'm a, I'm a yeah. geezer? Yeah. I don't like that word, geezer. No, geezer's a good thing in, in oh, England. Yeah. yeah, it means you're, you know, you're, you've got something about you. You're a bit, you know. I'm a little, has yeah. a little, a little, some, some, some. Yeah. A little, some, some, some. Yeah. <laughs> a fridge freezer. Remember that, because someone might call you that, and you might think they're talking about something, but I've told you what it is now. Okay. I like that, then. Keep calling me that. I, I'm, I'm cool with that. Better not be making fun of me. Um, Absolutely not, because yeah, I'm here for another three days. If you find that tonight, you're going to come and probably smash that camera over my head. But No, no, no. I'll just do what I thought in my head what it was. Knock somebody out cold. I'm just messing. <laughs> Fridge freezer. Honestly, it's good. Or, or, or lemon squeezer. Hey, it rhymes. Lemon squeezer, fridge freezer. Ooh, I was about to start something, but nah, never mind. <laughs>
Every time I interview you, I'm going to introduce you to some more Cockney rhyming slang. I like that. Okay. I like that. Yeah. I want to know. Hey, I'll learn something new. That'd be cool. Okay, I'm not going to take too much of your time. Uh, best of luck on Saturday. Hopefully, we'll grab a word of you after your fight. Have you got a closing message, Tiafima? Uh, to everybody in the UK, to everybody out there, um, continue to support me, Tiafima, and tune in ESPN Live. Um, I don't know. Are you guys going to show it in a in in um what is it? Boxer? No, no, no. Uh, no, no, right? Uh, uh, but for everybody, just tune in. Tio Fimo, December 14th, uh, against Richard Comey for the IBF world title. Uh, I thank everybody for supporting me always, and remember I fight for you. Mr. Lopez, thank you very much for your time, and wish you the best of luck on Saturday night at Madison Square Garden. Thank you. It's the takeover. It's the takeover, son. Huh? <laughs> it's special. Absolute dynamite. Oh.